the next few videos are going to be a sort of combination of probability theory and matrix algebra. And we'll start by talking about finite sets and stochastic matrices, or what I call stochastic maps. And we'll try to get through a lot of interesting topics. So first, I just want to make sure that we have all these definitions at hand. And the first one that I want to make is a probability measure. And for simplicity, we will be working with finite sets all the time. So a probability measure on x, where here x is a finite set, is a function that takes every element of x, and it gives me a number. And that number is between 0 and 1. And the sum of these numbers, when I sum over all elements in x, and let me just set notation that when I apply this probability measure to x, instead of writing p of x, I will write p subscript x, so such that the sum of these numbers equals 1. And a stochastic map is something very similar to this. Ah, and let me even set some more notation. The set of all probability measures on x is denoted by px. So a stochastic map from x to y, so another finite set, is a function from x to probability measures on y. Let's call that f. And we're going to introduce a convenient notation for such stochastic maps. So first, let's explain a convenient notation for how to write f. So if we take an element x and we apply it, we'll get a probability measure on y. For now, let's just call this f of x. Because this is a probability measure, it takes an element y in y and gives me a number between 0 and 1. So this takes an element y and maps it to f of x of y. Now, it's a little bit annoying to write something like this and potentially confusing. So instead of writing this, we will write f subscript yx. And the reason we write the y on the left is because we will end up in y and x on the right because we started in x. We'll see why this is convenient in a moment when we talk about composition of stochastic maps. And we'll also introduce graphical notation for this. Instead of writing a map from x to py, we will replace this by a map from x to y, but we'll use slightly different notation for our arrows, and we'll make them squiggly arrows like this. And the reason we want to do this is because there's a very nice example of a stochastic map if we have a function. So if x to y is a function, this actually gives us a natural stochastic map And just for this example, we'll call it delta f. Oops, these should be squiggly arrows now. So delta f to y, which sends an element x to a probability measure on y. And what should that probability measure be? Well, if I take, let's call this delta f for now. If I take an element in y and I plug in our initial element x, so again, we're using this notation here, then this is defined to be the Kronecker delta, so if we take the element x, apply f to it, we know what that is because we have a function already. And then we plug in y. So visually, how do I think of something like this? Well, a stochastic map is telling us if we start off in x, 
let me draw the arrows backwards for a moment, then it takes an element in x and it spreads that element out over y by giving us a probability distribution on y. But if we already have a function, then we know where that element x goes. It goes to a specific element which we call f of x. And therefore, it does give us a probability distribution. And that probability distribution is 1 when we evaluate it at f of x and 0 everywhere else. So I think of this as a deterministic process in some sense because we know, given an input, we know exactly what the output would be, will be with 100% probability. So we notice that there's this close relationship between functions and stochastic maps. In fact, functions are special kinds of stochastic maps. And instead of writing delta f all the time, we'll simply write xf. And we will think of this as a stochastic map, but we'll write it as a straight arrow. Another example, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between stochastic maps from a single element set into another finite set x. So this is going to be my notation for an, a set containing a single element, which I'm just calling bullet, and probability measures on x. Why is that? Well, if I have a stochastic map, I apply an element of it, I apply it to an element of the domain, and that gives me a probability measure on x. But this only has one element, so I only get one probability measure. So in general, a stochastic map is, you can think of it as a family of probability measures indexed by the domain of that stochastic map. Stochastic maps define conditional probabilities. or at least some kind of restricted notion of conditional probabilities. And the reason is because f, y, x, you can think of this as the probability of y occurring given that x has occurred. And you can if you know, if you have a definition of conditional probability and you are looking at single element events, then this definition coincides with the one you're thinking of for finite sets and again, single element events. But if you're not, then we're going to think of this as our notion of a conditional probability. So for being very concrete, let's take X to be the set whose elements are so pick your favorite supermarket, and let's say there's a good sale at that supermarket. And let me think of that as one element of this set X. And the other element is going to be a not great sale, or a not good sale at that same supermarket. So two elements, and let Y be the elements that state whether I go to the supermarket this week, or you go, or whatever, or um, I don't go. So I go to the supermarket, let's say this week, or something like that, or I don't go. And let's say if there's a good sale. Let's say the probability, right, because I might have a lot of food stocked in my pantry. I may or may not go to the grocery store this week. But if there's a good sale, maybe there's a good chance that I'll go. Let's say there's a 90% chance that I'll go. And if there isn't a good sale, well, it might be that I still need to get food so there's still going to be some chance that I go, but perhaps it'll be less. I'll be less 
enticed to go to that supermarket this week. Let's just say that there's a 60% chance I'll go. And with this information, we can define a stochastic map from x to y. So this actually defines a stochastic map. And we'll come back to this um, in several examples that we'll look at um, later on, because it's a nice, simple example. And the reason you can figure out what the rest of this is is just by using probabilities. Because if there is a good sale, the chance that I go is 90%, then there's a 10% chance I won't go. And conversely, if there isn't a good sale, then there's a 40% chance I don't go. So that defines a stochastic map. Just like with functions, we can compose stochastic maps as well. But this is going to have a really nice picture, so I'd rather give that its own uh, video. And we'll talk about compositions uh, in a moment.